Okay, so we're getting ready to harvest some meat off of this raccoon to make food. And there's one more set of glands I want to show you. And I usually don't even mess with those unless I'm going to cook the whole coon because I cut the meat away from those glands altogether. And I leave the ones we talked about yesterday as well unless I'm going to harvest those to make gland lure out of. And this gland is right behind the knee right here. And this calf muscle is over the top of that. You don't want that calf muscle anyway. So you can trim the whole ham off of this thing from both sides very easily without ever getting near that calf muscle. Get most of the fat off of it. Trim some of the fat down off of it, especially after it's cooled down. This thing is hung overnight now. So because it's hung overnight, the fat is solidified. And it's really easy to shave it off in layers. Now we could render that fat down. We've talked about that in other videos for everything from waterproof and gear, dressing leather and things like that to our boots. But what we're looking for is just this meat right here along this leg. I want this piece of meat right here. And I'm going to cut straight into it here and take that. And then I want this piece on the outside of the leg. And again, that gland is right behind that calf muscle. So we're going to stay away from that because down here is the meat we want. All right. So we're going to come up here on the front side. We're going to cut down into that right where the knee's at and go straight down that bone all the way down carving that meat off. And we can do that on both sides. Again, stay behind, well behind that knee. If I've got any large pieces of fat like this, I'm going to want to get those off the meat. So I'll just come in there and basically fillet that down. To get rid of most of that fat and just keep that good chunk of meat. Again, this doesn't have to be too small because we're going to grind it up anyway. Now I generally keep some hand sanitizer around, a nice big bottle of it, and that's what I use to disinfect the tops of things, wipe them off really good. dry it with some paper towel or a rag that you can wash ready for the next time. Okay once we get our meat ground up we're going to just take some roasted garlic and herb mix it into the meat Knead it up in there really good, and then we're going to let this meat sit for a little while while we're making our other fixings for the meatloaf. Stay with me. Okay, the next step in the process here is we're going to heat up about a half a cup of water. And we're going to take and add to that half a cup of water just a couple of spoonfuls. And I like to measure things by the spoons I have on hand. So I don't say tablespoons, teaspoons. I'm saying... A cooking spoon all right and so I've got a cooking spoon and I'm gonna put two of those vegetables into that water and the only reason we're doing that is to hydrate those soup green vegetables once we get them hydrated we're gonna drain them off and then we're going to mix that into our meat okay so now we've got our meat here We've got our vegetables rehydrated. Now we really want to skim off most of the juice and just mix the vegetables into our meat. So I'm just going to take these vegetables out a little at a time and strain them off on the side and put them in the meat. And this is carrots, onions, greens, celery, things like that. All the things you'd find in a normal meatloaf, really. And we don't need to overdo it, just get what we need. And then we're going to take that and mix that all together. Okay, the next step on this is really going to throw some people off. You've got this bush pot that's got these folding handles on it. These larger bale handles on the Gen 2 pot. And I'm going to go to the other side of this thing if I can. But these bale handles fit 
right over the top of that burner and lock into it. So what you're going to do is you're going to drop it down inside here and lock those bail handles right onto that burner just like that and that's going to steady your pot so that it won't move on you. Then you're going to put your bacon rack in there. Get these things drop down just a little bit more. Okay, now your pot is going to be steady in there with contact on that burner and contact on this rack. Then we're going to take our meatloaf and we're going to put it right in our oven, just like that. Okay, once we've got that taken care of, now we can put the lid on our oven, just like that. Okay, so what we need to do now is we've had about 40 minutes-ish of cook time. So what we're going to do now is, I've moved the pot over because I was making coffee a second ago, but um, I think what we're going to do is check our test tube really quick. And having a thermometer around is really good. You can obviously stick it through this hole in the bush pot to check the temperature inside your makeshift oven but it's also a good thing to have that available you see I just pulled that lid off of there and the way those folding handles on that bush pot flap around that burner on this thing it makes it a perfect little oven for this camp stove so now I'm just going to pull this thing out a little bit here piece of leather pad stick a thermometer in there and see where we're at we're looking for about 160. We're there. We're actually at about 170. Right there. Let's check back in the middle here and see where we're at. Yeah, we're hot back there too. So we're cooked. We're over 160 degrees in the middle of this thing, so we are cooked. Now, for the coupe de gras, what I'm going to do is... I'm going to cook this for about 10 minutes longer. What I'm going to do is, I'm going to add a small glazing to this meatloaf. Stay with me. Okay, I'm going to pull this dude out for just a minute here. You guys can see what it looks like there. And I'm going to put a little bit of honey right on the top, just like this. to give it a little bit of a honey glaze and I'm going to cook it for about another five minutes in there like that and then we'll be ready to eat I gotta tell you, about the only thing left to do now is taste test this bad boy. See what we got. Good cup of coffee. A little meatloaf. Oh man. Golly. You ain't kidding. All right, get some rib stick and food. All right. A lot of people ask, you know, oh man, what this tastes like. What does raccoon taste like? What does different animals taste like? And really, if you cook it right, I mean, each animal has its own individual flavor. But if you cook it right and you cook it with other seasonings, it's not gonna, you're not going to be able to tell it much different from normal table food that you eat every day. And this has got a little bit more of a grainy texture to it, I guess, than a meatloaf like you'd have in the house that was made from a beef cow. But, and it's a little drier meat. But I can tell you right now, it's every bit as good, if not better. And it's really, really good for you.
You know, you got to think about, lots of people talk about hunting rabbits and squirrels and blah, blah, blah. And those animals don't have hardly any fat on them. So if you want to sustain yourself with food, you're going to have to get fatty animals. And raccoons have a ton of fat. They're nice, dark red meat, and they're just a great, great food animal. Very, very underrated in my opinion. I can hardly stop eating long enough to talk. Man, it's good. Golly. Man. We had about a 45 minute cook time on that. Maybe 50 if you add the glazing time. But it's amazing. For sure. Guys, I appreciate you joining me today for this video on how to make a raccoon meatloaf in a bush pot on a camp oven. Lots and lots of combinations of things making do with what you have there. But it's easy to do and that's part of smoothing it. Smoothing it is going out in the woods and having fun. Going out to the cabin and having fun. If you're roughing it, you're doing something wrong. You should be smoothing it. This is what I call smoothing it. I appreciate your views. I appreciate your support. I thank you for everything we do for our school for our family and for our business. I appreciate everything you do for all of our sponsors, instructors, affiliates, and friends. I'll be back with another video as soon as I can. Thanks, guys. Man, I could chat all day.